Vampire Survivors is a roguelike in which you play as a vampire that must survive. The gameplay loop revolves around a lot of fodder enemies attacking a singular, more powerful organism. This phenomenon is well understood in the world of science and known as the germ theory of diseases. It was invented by Isaac Newton in the year 2077. This video may not be entirely lore accurate, but that's probably for the better. The milk factory canonically gets most of its white liquid from the bulls after all. Anyway, put your gaming socks on, bring a snack and enjoy this audiovisual piece of culture. In this game you can engage in lots of silly activities such as throwing a catholic priest to hell because just like in real life touching minors is a punishable offense. It is important to note that this game is very family friendly as you literally never kill anybody. As a pacifist with reality warping powers you merely commit non-consensual euthanasia. The first few runs will be tough, depending on RNG of course. But once the ball starts rolling you suddenly find yourself playing a standing still as the genocide commits itself simulator. While fun to look at the first few times after a while it starts feeling like watching paint dry while getting a colonoscopy with a traffic cone. That is to to say, you download this little thing called Deskpin which lets you overlay other apps on the very top of your desktop while still letting you interact with the stuff beneath it and use it on something like a YouTube video. Or alternatively, you live in the 21st century and open it on your second monitor instead. I, unfortunately, can't afford such luxury because being a citizen of a Polish village hard caps your monitor count at precisely one. No need to fact check this information, I am a trustworthy individual. Some people have criticized the game for its allegedly epileptic seizure inducing visuals. That complaint, however, stems from a simple case of skill issue. If you suffer from epilepsy, you should just coordinate your blinking in a way that gives you visual iframes in the moments of the biggest lobotomization of the screen. You may fail a few times before you succeed, but remember, suffering builds character and it's never bad to be a personality mogger. The game offers a plethora of playable characters, some better, some worse. This one specifically is so bad he makes you want to take part in the voluntary human extinction movement immediately. Trust me, I'd rather have a Valkyrie Turner blast me in the asshole IRL than play one more game of this boomerang demon. I bet there is a special chair in hell on which only he sits. Despite some of these unpleasant bits, the game is literally designed to pump dopamine into your head. The guy who made it has previously worked on gambling machines, after all. You are exceedingly unlikely to experience severe frustration while playing Vampire Survivors. It's a single player game, if you lose you just go next and hope that RNG is more lenient this time. It's pretty much the exact opposite of PvP competitive games such as League of Legends where players often suffer from dangerous head injuries or medically concerning physiognomy. The only thing you compete with in this game is your silly thoughts while looking at the main menu. In the life of every vampire survivors enjoyer comes a time when he evolves his clock lancet and laurel for the first time. This results in a minor case of a serotonin induced severe brain damage and being turned gay. Fear not though, it's not completely homoerotic if the penis is feminine enough. You will die in this game, a lot. But upgrading the meta progression chart unlocks the ability to undergo a simple medical procedure called spinal replacement and you will be able to cope with your death and literally move on. Speaking of moving, everything will move very fast after you pick up a suspicious looking finger chilling on the ground. It induces a manic episode and you start witnessing the visual hallucinations of a heavy drug addict. God damn I love heroin, my favorite is Wonder Woman. And what I hate are these Australia sized mantises. By the way, did you guys know that mantises die right after having sex? Speaking from experience. One of the game's mechanic is called curse. It basically makes monsters more monstery and increases their quantity so that there is a lot of them, but not more than the amount of my sheer aura and the amount of cute eagles in my DMs. So even when times get tough, I emerge victorious. Sometimes. Alright, but let's get back to the beginning. The game is in its entirety about genocide and I mean it in the most non-sarcastic sense possible. There is you and there is them. Your job is to obliterate every moving thing, including death itself. The death fight is interesting, there are two items that allow you to deal with it. The reality warping raincoat which kinda just makes you immortal and deals retaliatory damage to the reaper when it attacks you. And the sizable passage which by turning you into a type green allows you to trap death in time and half its HP every once in a while thanks to the power of gayness. The game has an artifact system, meaning that there are items scattered around various stages in various places and once you collect them new possibilities in terms of gameplay arise. Faster clock, faster everything, rerolls, banishes, skipping, arcanas, 
which are very epic by the way. My favorite is the one that drags all items on the map towards you instantly every two minutes, which includes the stuff necessary for the two broken items I mentioned just a while ago. Be careful with this one though, these specific items summon a bunch of higher level enemies which may be hard to deal with depending on your build. Speaking of which, water is hilariously broken in Vampire Survivors. Excluding a few specific circumstances, it will always be the top one damage source in a given run. Have regular showers been the solution all along? That is a question we must all answer for ourselves and I will not impose my conclusions on the viewers. Wake up, shipple, and think for yourself. But only after you subscribe and like the video. That you most definitely must do no matter what. Weapons can evolve or unite. An evolution requires a corresponding passive item and then a chest. A union is just like an evolution, except it's a weapon plus weapon combination. There are also, in rare cases, combinations of both of these systems, most notably pierogi. There are also exceptions such as the bracelet, which evolves twice while requiring no other items, just time. Making it functionally identical to well-worn socks of a femme. Boy. The riper, the better. But don't let your imagination go wild just yet, we have a race to genocide. Screen white meteors will be perfect for this task. There are a few enemies that you can just talk no jutsu into switching sides. You just need to be persuasive, just like me when I ask you to like the video. Pretty please.